A very warm welcome to Sheffield Cathedral on this Easter day for this celebration of Evensong. We begin by making our confession to Almighty God. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In thy mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with thee, our God. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>
A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all round them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. Here ends the first reading.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory. Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to, to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Here ends the second reading.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
In the name of the risen Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This Holy Week has been memorable at Sheffield Cathedral. But I was thinking about, thinking about other Easter's that have been memorable for me. And I think the one that really sticks in my mind was when I was quite newly ordained and a curate on the manor in Sheffield. I'd been at it for a couple of years and my training incumbent left to take up a new post. So it was all down to me to keep the show on the road. Obviously, I loved it. Um, Left to my own devices, I decided to do some things that um, I hadn't previously been able to experiment with. And one of the things that I felt really strongly about was that the first Gloria that was sung on <coughs> Easter morning should be accompanied by very loud bell ringing. I learned this at college, that this symbolized Christ bursting from the tomb, trampling death victorious over it. And I loved that imagery. So the week before Easter, I said to the congregation, please, will you come with all the bells that you've got in your house? Now, on Easter morning, they all arrived, but not one of them had brought a bell. I think they thought I was an idiot. But I wasn't going to be put off because I'd planned this for some time. So I went into the kitchen and I gathered up all the pots and pans that I could find and all the ladles and spoons. And solemnly, I handed them out to the congregation and said, when it gets to the Gloria, you've got to bang them. There was a, a certain amount of eyebrow raising and eye rolling um, and huffing and puffing from the congregation. And I primed the organist to play a big fanfare beforehand. And as he did so, I began banging my pan with a ladle quite determinedly. And first of all, people looked at me without moving an inch and clearly thought that I'd lost my mind. But then I can't quite describe what happened, but it felt as if I heard an enormous whoosh. And suddenly, the people in the congregation who had been quite skeptical about what I had in mind suddenly joined in. Hands started to be banged, and before I knew it, it was so loud that I could feel my eardrums hurting. And then I began to see that people got onto their seats, were standing, and literally banging their pangs in the air. It was the most exuberant sight that I've ever seen, and all I could do was stand at the altar and weep, the tears just poured down my face when I saw this group of people who'd gone from being fairly serious, fairly skeptical of what I was trying to do to people utterly caught up in the joy of the resurrection. I will never forget that moment and I swear the Holy Spirit swooped down and whisked us up in her arms and said, come along with me. During that service, I then sprinkled water on people as they renewed baptismal vows. And I'll never forget that a woman on the front row who actually died this year, Pat, um, got out of her handbag, her plastic headscarf, and put it on as I approached with the holy water. And she had the cheekiest look on her face. And she did a little jig in the middle of the aisle and everyone roared with laughter. Once again, it was kind of completely out of character and yet something came over that place it was a giddiness that was an overflowing of love and joy and it was quite special last year 
Somebody complained to me on Easter Day following our Easter morning service. It was someone who hadn't been at the service, but they'd seen a picture on social media of myself and Father Geoffrey standing at the door of the cathedral wearing bunny ears and giving out chocolate eggs to people. The person who complained felt that we weren't taking the feast of Easter seriously enough. And of course, I do really hesitate before I do all of this stuff. Because I know, I know the world is terribly broken. And I know that people are broken and sad and angry and frightened. And so I do hesitate before I enter into the world of ridiculousness. But it seems to me that if you believe that this extraordinary thing happened to Jesus, and you believe that it changes the world, then the only response is love, and if your heart is absolutely overflowing with love, then it does bubble over into laughter and unbridled joy. And if that's you today, this Easter, then you are the bearer of a very, very powerful medicine that the world in all its brokenness needs very desperately right now. Of course, Easter silliness has a very long tradition. In 15th century Bavaria, it became a tradition for priests to simply stand in the pulpit and tell jokes and funny stories on Easter Day. And after the service, the congregation carried on by playing practical jokes on one another. One priest I know down in Portsmouth used to crack an egg open on the head of his newest curate every Sunday on Easter Day. Holy laughter, joyful fools for Christ. So do laugh today, because what else can we do in the face of this wild, extraordinary, mysterious, and awe-inspiring truth, Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. Pay attention to the way it makes you feel. Rejoice in the knowledge of a God that loves us so much that he died for us and descended deep into the depths of hell to ensure that there is not one single place in all the universe that is not filled with that crazy, mind-blowing love. Laugh long and loud at the God who rose again from the dead. Listen for the voice of Jesus calling your name and know that you are loved beyond measure. Laugh and light up this world with that love you feel in your heart. That love can light up the darkest places. That love can heal the most damaged souls. That love is for you. That love is for every person. As the head verger walked down the central aisle of the nave this morning, dressed as a fried egg, and the dogs leapt about, and everyone was covered in confetti, and children dashed around hunting for eggs, 
I felt a deep certainty that we have learnt together this week once again that the unstoppable love that flows into our hearts as we wake up to resurrection joy is certainly more powerful than anything else in this world. Let us pray. On this Easter day, Lord, give us the gift of joy and laughter. Help us to see that that joy and laughter flows from your deep love for each of us. Help us to be confident, to allow that love to bubble over into joy that infects everyone we meet and every place we go. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for those dark places in the world on this Easter day. We pray for Christians in places where it is difficult to celebrate this Easter day loudly and joyfully. We pray for those who have celebrated in underground places. Lord God, in those dark places, may your light break forth. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord God, we pray for those people who feel so full of sorrow that it is hard to find the joy. Lord God, bless those, your beloved children, who are struggling this night. Hold them warmly in your arms. And may they know release because of your resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. So we gather together all our prayers, those that have been spoken aloud and those that remain in the secrets of our hearts. And we say together, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
So may the blessing of the risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you this night, this Easter week, and always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You take care. See you soon.